So, originally I was supposed to dissect a dogfish, but it turns out, ironically, that a good heart is, these days is slightly easier to find than a dogfish. So, I'm going to dissect this. Yeah. So, th so this is a, a cow's heart. Uh, cows are mammals. We've been domesticating them for the last 10,000 years or so. And this one was raised for meat. So cows, like most other animals, develop along an axis, which means they have a top and a bottom and a front and a back. And like humans and most other vertebrates, cows have an anterior and a posterior, which is your front or your top and your bottom. They have a dorsal and your ventral, which is the ba front, back and the front. And they also have a left and a right, which is what I find really interesting. Because, you know, if you look at this heart, which would be placed this way if it was a human heart, um, the left hand side is really different from the right hand side. It has different I'm pointing it the wrong way. No, it has um, a different shape and different connections. And, you know, I think that's really interesting because externally on the outside of our bodies, we're pretty much symmetrical. Our left hand side is a mirror image of our right hand side. And in fact, the more symmetrical you are, the more attractive you appear. Um, but inside, it's a completely different story. So while we have, you know, two kidneys that are pretty much the same, we have two lungs that are slightly different. We also have an incredible digestive system with this network of a liver that's placed on your right hand side, a stomach that's on your left hand side, you know, pancreas, a gallbladder, all of these things that veer off to one side. And this happens when we develop as embryos. So certain genes get switched on on the left hand side of the body that don't get switched on on the right and vice versa. And this tells the organs how to develop. So in the case of the heart, what happens is this group of cells move along the central axis of your body before veering off to the left a little bit and then twisting around to the right to form this really kind of cool, complex organ with lots of different chambers and connections. Um, so we're going to have a closer look at it now and I'm going to dissect it. I have to move this around. Apologies to the next user of the microphone. Uh, so you can see on the outside, um, the heart has this kind of protective coating called the pericardium, and it's this thin layer around the heart to protect it. You can also see the heart's blood supply, because even though the heart is responsible for pumping blood around the entire body, it also needs blood itself, because it's this living organ. So you can see the arteries along the side. These are the main coronary arteries. And you can see the blood vessels in the top. So let me see, let me orientate it. So this is the left side. So coming out from the left ventricle is the aorta. So if we look in here, you can see this is the wall of the aorta. So can you see it there? So that's, that's the aorta. That's the, the massive artery that pumps blood all, over, all around the body to all of the different tissues. That's why the left side is much thicker than the right hand side because the muscle has to be stronger to send that blood which is filled with oxygen around to all of the cells around the body. Um, the other side is slightly thinner because it only has to send blood to the lungs to pick up oxygen. So to have a better look inside, we're gonna hack it open. And can you see that? Kind of blocking it. So we're gonna open up the right ventricle first of all. So you can see inside. Can you see inside there? So this is the chamber that when the muscle of the heart contracts, it sends blood to the lungs to pick up oxygen. On the other side, if I don't hack my fingers off, uh, we have the left ventricle. So that's, that's much thicker. When the blood picks up oxygen in the lungs, it comes back. Uh, comes back to the left ventricle and is pumped all around the body. So you can see how thick the wall is there. Um, there you go. And in between we have the septum. So the septum divides the two chambers. And before we're born, when we're developing in the womb, there's a hole between the two because the, heart, the blood doesn't have to go to the lungs. We don't use our lungs when we're developing as a fetus. Instead, the blood picks up oxygen at the placenta. So there's a hole in between, a kind of a detour that um, allows the blood to kind of just pick up that blood and when the baby cries for the very first time there's a high pressure that sends the blood backwards and closes over that valve between the two. So then we can see what happens, uh, the, the heart is a part of a larger circulatory system and sometimes the left doesn't develop um, as it should and, and you get a complete reversal of where the organs should be. You get the things that should be on the left over on the right and if that happens for all of the organs then it's, that person can live a very healthy life. Um, but if it happens to just one of the organs or just a few of the organs, everything gets all messed up and 
It doesn't end so, so good. So that's, I hope you've enjoyed the, the inside of the heart. We'll be doing it here tomorrow at about 2 o'clock. Come along and you can have a go at it yourself. All right, thank you. Thank you.